verse 12. Oh, our Lord, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeal, the son of Matama, Matana, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, hearken ye all Judah, mm -hmm. and ye children of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they came up by the cliff of Ziz, and they shall, and you shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jerul. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand you still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Last week, I started teaching a subject that was entitled Transformative Living. And today, I want to talk again from that same thought transformative living please take your seat transformative living as I shared with you on uh, last week that uh, we are called of God to be salt to be light and to be a city we are called of God to be that change agent and that it is not our responsibility or it, rather I should say it's not our position to be altered by the culture. It is our responsibility to change the culture through and with Christ. It is that transformative living. It is living that causes change not only in you but that causes change around you you become an extension of change we see righteousness preserved in a society because there are people who do righteous things who do the right thing you can't pray for God to cause righteousness to come back to America and Christians don't act righteous. We are the chain. You can't ask God to walk up into your house and save all of your children and to save your wayward spouse. I'm preaching good right now. And you living like the devil on skates. No, no, you become the seed that he works with in the earth realm. Oh, I can't get nobody talking to me. See, the problem with our Christianity versus the, 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 the Christianity uh, of the first century church is that we don't include our Christianity as a part of our everyday lifestyle. It is something we pick and choose when we want to do it, how long we want to do it. But when you understand that the first century Christians saw themselves as martyrs, you were not a Christian if you didn't die. So they were born in Christ looking to die in Christ because of Christ. Ain't nobody paying no mind. So they lived their whole life understanding that if I don't die losing my life, I haven't represented him well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have 
a strange way of thinking now. Something is wrong with our following Christ doesn't lead us outside of ourselves. It leads us to ourselves, pleasing ourselves. When the church of Jesus Christ was built on blood and suffering, how can you expect the infrastructure to be different than the foundation? If the first century church was built on blood and suffering, that means the structure is built on blood and suffering. The infrastructure is built on blood and suffering. Y'all don't want to shout now. The windows, the exterior and the interior must contain blood and suffering. It's this new found fangled thought process about who Jesus is that's really causing the culture to go preserve. It's because we have changed who Christ is in the earth to make him convenient for us. If your Christianity doesn't find yourself, find you in an uncomfortable place, I came to tell you, you've chosen the wrong system of belief. If you never have a head-on collision with anybody and you're always going the same direction, that means you're traveling safety in one direction. Okay, all right, I know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's probably the wrong message to be preaching about this. But we cannot talk about being change agents and transformative living unless we recognize we are the agents that he uses to change. You are the agent. Why do I need to come to your family and let your family see Jesus in me? And you've been there for 40 years. follow, I'm going to get to my text in a minute I'm going to get there if you follow the message and the teachings of Jesus every person who found themselves transformed by his teachings transformed by his power and they wanted to immediately to go where he was going in location his next words to them was go home it's always easy to go show your newness in somebody who never knew you. But it's a challenge to take your newness back to old places who knew you. But your greatest witness is those who knew you. Y'all ain't shouting on me here. Transformative living. Martyrdom, martyrdom was the order of the day for the first century Christians. If they didn't find themselves on the opposing side, the first century believers knew that we are not following the rubrics of Christ. They took seriously that to pick up my cross and to follow him. And that in picking up my cross is going to mean the death to my life. They took it spiritually as well as they figuratively. They took it also literally. That if I follow him, I'm going to lose who I am. Mm, 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 mm. So they counted not their lives dear to them. Could it be we think too much of ourselves and less of him? Because when you think too much of yourself and less of him, you're going to live out who you think the more of. You mean like it when I don't like it mean. So Paul said, I die daily because I realize there's too much of me alive. And if there's too much of me alive, the pleasure is going to always be bringing me pleasure. But Paul said that though the outward man, is, the inward man is perishing, or rather the outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed. In other words, I bring myself to a modifying place. I die daily. I deal with the struggle that's happening there because I recognize I bear witness of his sufferings in my body. You can't be a witness of something unless you are a partaker of it. And you can't be a partaker of it unless you are experiencing it. So Paul said, I bear witness. You ain't like 
you what I'm saying. I bear witness of the dying of the Lord. Yeah, God. I bear witness of the dying of the Lord that I look at what happened to him and I recognize that I'm next up in line. Not only to be blessed. Oh, I'm going somewhere with this text. I'm, I, I know I'm going to lose most of you right here. Not only are you next in line to be blessed with your new house, your new car, your new wife, your new husband. See, this is where, see, this is where this new church is missing up out. And this is why this new church has no strength. Because we are holding on to the wrong things. That our interest is things and stuff and rings and things. Uh, rather than exemplifying the lifestyle of the one who saved us. Not only are you next in line, baby, for rings and things and stuff, but you also next in line to be wrung out. Y'all missing what I'm saying? Who told us that your life of Christ was going to be some easy, some easy just get through? And that's what is messing up Christendom. That is what's messing up this new church. So that when people begin to experience anything that seems out of the ordinary of your imagination, you charge it against God. But when you look at the text that I'm going to today, I'm almost done. Ooh, ooh. I don't mean to get on your nerves here. But transformative living does not absentee you from what is happening in the whole of society but what it does is it gives us a God response and a God perspective it doesn't absentee you from it it gives you another way of responding to it ooh, 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 ooh. you couldn't get any glorious than Jesus but he was not absentee from absentee from any of all of the challenges of life the bible says he was in all ways like us tempted in everything but what it does do is it gives us a different way of responding it gives us a god response transformative living will lead us into transformative victory. This text is an interesting text and, and I know we like to get down and shout about the battle is not mine. We hang our hat up on there. I noticed when I was reading it you didn't say much until I got down to that part. And when I got to that part some of you, oh yeah, oh yeah. But you miss what makes the battle his. If I don't get the strategy, I won't be able to have the results. It's interesting here because now Israel is living in a divided posture. There's a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. It's divided. Pretty much from chapters 10 to chapter chapters 28, we see a lot going on in these chapters. We see Levitical worship. We see retribution. We see a dependence upon God. We see kings who've gone amok. We see dynasties that are failing. We see fear. We see battles. We see prayer. We see the onslaught of false prophets in these 10 chapters from chapter 10 through chapter 28. These 18 chapters depict what was happening in all of Israel, the north and the southern kingdom. But in chapter 19, something interestingly happens because Jehoshaphat, who became a righteous king, was known as a reformer. Chapter 19 of 2 Chronicles. He brought worship, Levitical worship, back to Israel. He brought a, an understanding in the truth and a love for the reading of scriptures back to Israel. He tore down all of the, the groves and 
the places of habitation that the false prophets of Jezebel and Ahab had built up. And any paganistic idol that, that had its origin from, 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 from the God of Baal, he tore it down. He went through, uh, he went through the priesthood and pulled out every priest who did not have its Levitical um, uh, bloodline tied to Levi because the priesthood had gotten perverted. See, when the priesthood becomes perverted, it starts letting perversion in. Anybody pay me no mind? I wish I had time to hang my hat there. See, perversion doesn't happen out of, perversion does not happen out of purity. Perversion happens because impurity has gotten in. And when impurity comes in, it opens the door to more. Woo! And so he went through purging the priesthood. And the reason why the priesthood had to be purged because that was affecting worship. It was affecting what they did and how they did it and who they did it to. So he purged the priesthood. Glory to God. Oh, I feel this thing in my spirit. He purged it. He purged it. He, he purged it. He didn't leave it in the hands of the high priest because the high priest was the one, was one of the, of the uh, persons who were put in place that had no connection to Levi. If you're asking people who have no connections to righteousness to do what's right, it'll never happen. Oh, why well, y'all looking at me like that? I know, I, I know. Uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so Jehoshaphat didn't wait until the high priest did the cleansing based on the Levites and the priests that were under him. Jehoshaphat did it himself. Glory. He did his own research. He went through and checked every priest where they came from. How did you get here? Can you trace your lineage? By, well, that's why in the scripture when you see it here, it talks about who he was, that this is a, 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 a rather, a, a, a rather Jehaziel, but then it traces the lineage of where Jehaziel, who was now not only the priest but a worship leader, who he traced his lineage back to Levi. Why? Because King Jehoshaphat made it a mandate. You have to be destined for this, not because you like doing it. Because you want people who have a calling to do it, not just those who have a liking to do it. Okay, you don't, are you all calling me today? So he traced his lineage back to, and that's why you read in verse, in verse number, uh, read there in verse number, uh, let's say verse number 14. It says, Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of, the son of, the son of, the son of. It goes back until it gets back to Levi because he understood that there must be purity in the priesthood. There cannot be purity in worship until there is purity in the priesthood because out of the priesthood comes the worship. All right. I, I know, I know y'all want me to get the way I'm going. I'm going to get there. And so he becomes known as a reformer. Uh, Deacon Shirley, he becomes known as a reformer. But one thing about people who reform, there is a group that's with you. But there's also a group who's against you because you dismiss what they have done. Because now it means that those persons who were used to doing it that way have now been removed, huh? have now been displaced. Light has come. Now the true ones who've been assigned from God not because they chose to be there, not because they paid money to get there, it's because God chose them to be there from the beginning. God gave the sons of Levi the responsibility of the priesthood. That's what God did. Some people are upset not because you're the one doing it, it's because God is the one who did it. God is the one who put you where he put you. God is the one who gave you what he gave you. God is the one who laid his hands on you. God is the one. And people are bothered not just by you, but they're really bothered by what God has done that they had nothing to do with. I'm, I'm, I'm just talking the text. And so there were those who were happy with him. But then there was another group who left from following him 
and join themselves to become citizens of other nations. Mm -hmm. And they now join those who were enemies with Israel or enemies with Jehoshaphat because now they have strength to stand against what they don't like from the beginning. The thing I discovered about enemies, enemies don't like to like each other to be against you. See, with enemies, it's not about likability. It's about common cause. See, enemies don't have to like one another to come at you. They have a common cause. Okay. All right. And so now they join themselves to other countries, to other citizenry. They, they became connected to other countries. Mm -hmm. And they became so connected to other countries that they, 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 be, they began to tell the infrastructure of Jehoshaphat. They began to tell what makes Israel like Israel is. Because they joined themselves to other places. Ah, I'm going somewhere with this message here this morning. They joined themselves. So they began to tell what were the weak spots in Israel. Because they knew it. Even though they were bogus, they still knew where the strengths were and where the weaknesses were. You got to watch people who really not really with you. But they know enough about you to use what they know against you. Y'all ain't liking what I'm saying here today? Oh, Lord. Okay, okay, uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, they know enough. They hear enough about you. They, 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 they know. They, they know enough. They, they know your strength. They know your weaknesses, and they know just enough to use on you and about you. Mm. Help me, God, while I try to teach up in here today. They, they, they know that people who did that at Greater Salem. Oh, I ain't sleep, y'all. Y'all think I'm? I got blinders on. Some got mad because I changed the chairs. Well, I don't like sitting in the front. I want to sit on the side. It's my tail sitting anyway, so what you worried about it for? I'm, I'm serious. Somebody asked me why I moved the chair. I said, because I wanted to. And they get mad because you moved the chairs. You ain't liking what I'm saying. They get, they get mad because they changed the order of the worship. Yeah, they, they find ways, they find ways to get at you. They find ways to do stuff. They take stuff outside of the church and tell it to other people. So the people think they're learning our strategies. And they pray against our strategies. Woo! They come just to hear what we're going to do next. What I'm going to say next. What's the next direction? So they can get on that telephone. Oh, I know y'all wish I had Bishop Dennis here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get on the telephone so they can speak against it, so they can talk about it, so they can now put negativity out there. And they come up in here and shout, dance like they with the program, but they go back out here and get on the telephone and tell up everything and that's negative and they go against the program, but I'm going to tell somebody, but God, And if you're not careful, Deacon Cheryl, as a leader, you'll stop responding to flesh and blood. You'll get in yourself, but every night, that's why I got to spend time in prayer. That I don't allow what the people are doing to frustrate the glory in me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. There were people who were with us when it looked like we were going under. Until God gave us a lifeboat and we came out. And when the moment we came out, they got mad. Something is wrong with that kind of thinking. I'm with you because you're going to lose it. Okay. Lord have mercy. Well, all right, my... Okay, I'm, I'm going to let y'all go because I don't Oh. So they, 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 they left him because he began to, to do some things differently. And they joined themselves to others who were enemies 
of Israel. And one morning, these three enemies joined together who didn't like each other. It's in the text. Ammonon, Mount Seir, these, in verses 1 and 2, these three nations who never liked each other. But they all had one thing in common. They didn't like Jehoshaphat. We don't like each other, but we don't like him. So they joined themselves together to come against him. I'm preaching a wonderful lesson up in here. Yeah, yeah, they, they joined themselves together to come against him. And the Bible says that the first thing that happened to Jehoshaphat is that fear gripped him. I begin to look at the text and discover why did fear grip him? Because this man has been in battles before. So why is he now, baby? Why is he, why is he fearful this time? Well, upon my additional research, I discovered that what he was afraid of is that those who walked with him knew all the weak places about him. They knew the strength of the armies of Israel. They knew the weaknesses in their military defense. You ain't liking what I'm saying. They knew not only the strength, but they knew the weaknesses. And they could take the weaknesses and win against them. So fear gripped him. Somebody say fear. Fear gripped him, not because he didn't have what it took to win the battle, but they will use what they know that will cause him to lose because there isn't enough time to strengthen the weak places that are in our house, to strengthen the weak places that are in our nation. So they came up against him, but something happened in the life of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat became, was a man of prayer. When you read Jehoshaphat's life, while he sat up under watching, oh God, while he sat up under watching his father not rule in a godly way, Jehoshaphat found himself looking at the scriptures and learning to stay connected to the pure priest of the house because he knew that one day his day was going to come when he got on the throne and he wanted to rule in righteousness. Let me tell somebody here right now, you do the right thing. Your time is going to come when God's going to make you that city that sat on the hill that cannot be here. Lord, my time is getting away here. So Jehoshaphat was a man of prayer. Jehoshaphat was a man of prayer before he got to the place of being king. Watch this, y'all. You can't wait until you get in the spot to become spiritual. You can't wait until you get in the ministry to get anointed. You can preach it. You can say amen when they get ready. You can't wait until you get the spotlight to learn how to live in the dark light. You can't wait until it's your day to learn how to manage your day. You got to learn how to manage your day when it's not your day. You got to learn how to live in the spotlight by learning how to live in the dark light. You got to learn how to live in public by how you live in private. Because whatever you do in private is going to bless you in public. Somebody say, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Tell your neighbor, learn it before you get there. The wrong time to learn how to swim is when you're drowning. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's too late. You don't learn how to be a wife or to be a husband when you get married. You learn along the way. You ain't liking what I'm saying. Oh, y'all are like, yeah, 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 yeah. We got too many people trying to have this on the job training. Some stuff you can't learn on a job. You got to know before you get the job. Because by the time you get the job, you got to hit it running. I, let me hurry up. I'm trying to get through something. Jehoshaphat. <laughs> I'm talking about a lifestyle. See, a lifestyle. A transformative of living. He had a lifestyle. So, so, so he, he, he was a man of prayer. And so the first thing Jehoshaphat did in the text here, when he saw that his enemies were coming in to him and they had enough goods, uh, Elder Damien, to get him. The Bible says great fear gripped his heart. But the next thing that he responded to was, the Bible says the thing that he did was, he stood in the house. 
Verse 5, he found the house of God and he stood in the house. When he stood in the house, he began to pray about what was going on and what was happening. He stood in the house. While he was praying, God, uh, he, God gave him instructions on what to do. He told him to gather the people and call a consecration, call a fasting, call a prayer. You know, don't let nobody eat. Don't let anybody uh, sleep. Yeah, pull them together and, and let's pray and inquire of the Lord because what, what we recognize, this is just not Jehoshaphat's fight. This is also our fight. It is our fight. It is our fight because we recognize that the enemy, if he takes out our head, he gets the rest of the body. We understand they're just not after Jehoshaphat. They're after all of us because all of us represent the God that Jehoshaphat has served. Mm -hmm. So they all came together in this gathering of fasting and prayer. And while they were there in fasting and prayer, the Bible says that the spirit of God fell on a man by the name of Jehaziel. Jehaziel means God has seen and God has revealed and I told you earlier that Jehaziel was one of the psalmists he was one of the worship leaders Come on, somebody said worship leaders mm. he was one of the worship leaders he was one of the Levites and the Levites were the one who were given the assignment to usher the people into the presence of God but not only to usher the people into the presence of God but also to usher the presence of God into the people on the people and so Jehaziel who traced his lineage back to a pure Levitical order and the Bible says and the spirit of God fell on Jehaziel can I tell somebody in this room my dears and sirs it is out of prayer that new levels of worship are being birthed uh, uh, new levels of being birthed have nothing to do with a song new levels of worship have to do with a word it's not how high you can sing it's really how low you can go it's out of prayer that God is revealing strategies it's out of prayer that the sound of breakthrough is happening it's out of prayer that things are breaking out it's out of prayer that God's giving new direction it's out of prayer that God's giving you how to do it it's out of prayer God's telling you what not to do it's out of prayer that God's giving you new strategies to get through with where you're going can I tell somebody in this room that if you find yourself in a, in a predicament and prayer is not the order of the day that you won't get what you need from God but when you find yourself in a place of prayer oh God help me up in here prayer is the order of God it is the order of God for this season and out of prayer God's birthing some new things it's out of prayer new levels of influence are being birthed out of prayer you want to be noticed the way you get noticed and your skill gets noticed and your ability gets noticed you got to pray it through and once it's prayed through then it can be released in the atmosphere prayer becomes the place of birthing come on and say prayer becomes the place of, of the become the place of birthing prayer worship leaders uh, cannot lead if they cannot be led mm. oh my god it's not about you bringing people someplace that you yourself uh, is not there uh, watch the text the progression of the text you see Jehoshaphat called the prayer meeting teacher lesson Mr. Porter Jehaziel came to the prayer meeting when Jehaziel was in the prayer meeting the spirit of God got on Jehaziel uh, and Jehaziel gave the word that they needed but he could give the word that they needed if he didn't follow the instructions of being there because God's use of you does not absentee you from following leadership oh woo. It's quiet in here, hallelujah. We have entered into a new day where people take their anointing as an opportunity to do what they want to do, like they want to do it. I'm my own covering. You are not your own covering because what you recognize, the way you got what you got is because it came down. <laughs> anointing don't come up, baby. They come down. Uh, if you got anything on you, it came down from somebody. Y'all don't like what I'm saying. 
the moment you divorce yourself or absent to yourself from the flow of the anointing will become the day that you will find yourself in a dry spot without having a release happening in you, your life. My dears and sirs, Jehoshaphat or rather Jezreel or rather Jehaziel was the one who God gave the word to. But he had to follow the word from Jehoshaphat. Ah, my God. You've got to follow somebody. Tell your neighbor, you got to follow somebody. Ah, if you're going to be in the place of God, God is a place, is a God of order. The things that happen in God, they happen out of divine order. You ain't liking what I'm saying. If you want your home blessed, it's got to come in divine order. If you want your finances blessed, it's got to come in divine order. If you want your life blessed, you can shout when you get ready. You got to come in divine order. God doesn't bless outside of his order because if God blesses outside of his order, then that means God's blessing disorder and the Bible says God's not the author of confusion he's not attached to disorder but if you find order there their God has commanded his blessing hey! Lord have mercy mm. oh God oh let me um, yeah 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 mm -hmm. uh-huh I'm talking about transforming the living. I'm going to get there. So stay right there. Right there. Look at what happens here. Because of transformative living, Jehaziel now gives the answer to their dilemma. It's out of Jehaziel following. I'm done. I'm about done. That God now releases to him what he needs. Uh -huh. Jehaziel responds to them. And he tells them what not to do. He says, be not dismayed, nor be ashamed. He then tells them what to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, he tells them what to do. Look here in verse uh, uh, 16. Tomorrow go down against them. In verse 15, he tells them what not to do. In verse 16, he tells them what to do. Verse 17, he tells them what's going to be the end result. Oh. So he tells them what not to do. He tells them what to do. He then tells them what's going to be the outcome. This battle, you won't have any need to fight it. Watch this. Watch this. And I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to get you out of here. I'm done. I'm done. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, 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 transformative living will bring you to transformative victory. Mm -hmm. See, when your life is lived in a transformative way, God transforms how you get victory. See, up until now, the way that Jehoshaphat has been fighting and winning, he's by winning through armies of men fighting. Bows and arrows and men fighting Bodies against bodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fist against fist. Woo, woo. But there is a place that God want to bring us to that you win in a new way. Hallelujah. Transformative living, y'all, brings us to a place of living a new way. It, 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 it's a decision that you must make in your mind that I'm going to I'm going to hear something differently. I'm going to do something differently. Look at what the Lord says to him. He says, your strategy is going to be three things. Number one, settle your position. Uh, he says, he says, look at verse 17. I'm, and, and, and I'm done. This is my, I'm going to get these three points and I'm going to let you go. You shall not fight in this battle. You shall not fight in this battle. You shall not fight in this battle. In other words, you're not going to fight like you have fought. Because in all of your battle leading up to now, Israel has won because men went toe-to-toe -to -toe with other men. But the Lord says that transformative living will bring you to, to transformative victories where you now win on a new level. And the reason why, y'all, oh, that he had to have a new way of winning is because he had defectors who had joined the enemy's side who knew his strengths and knew his weaknesses 
So had he tried the whole strategy, they were already ready for him. Ooh, you're missing what I'm saying up in here. So transformative living will now place you in a way to win on a whole new level. Sometimes we're afraid of people because the, you think that they know us or they know who you are and they know where you've been. And so you, make, you, you become a little nervous and a little fearful of what they can do or what they might have the possibilities of doing. But my dears and sirs, when your life comes to another level, God will never see his promise go down in your life. God will show you a new, a new way how to win even though your enemies know your old ways. Because what your enemy does not no, he doesn't know God's ways. So God said to him, "You will not fight in this battle. In other words, you will not use what you have uh, what you have used before to win like you have won. But what I need you to do is set yourself. The verse seventeen says, "Set yourself. Set, set yourself." In other words, it means I need you to settle your position. In other words, I need you to start off by knowing you are in a winning posture. It means I need you to get yourself together and get in position. Get in position as a winner like you know you are going to win. You got to set your position. You got to become settled in your position. You must become settled in your position. You must set yourself in place take your place of victory know who you are know who you're not my god teach bishop porter i think i will even though you don't even know how it's going to turn out but you know it's going to turn out better than what is going on now come on tell yourself settle yourself and no matter what's happening whatever's going on i'm getting in a, in, in, in a position to win i'm getting in a position to take control i'm settling myself set yourself hallelujah when you knew what you was doing Zachariah or rather Jehoshaphat you had confidence because you knew what your armies could do you knew what your men could do but now you're a little weak you're now you're a little withdrawn you don't know if you're going to win I need you to settle yourself I need you to bring yourself an agreement that I know what I'm doing I need you to bring yourself an agreement that I was God then and I'm God now I need you to grab your hold of your mind bring your mind in line with my word tell your spirit to get in control and let your confessions become confessions of truth and settle yourself you must settle the fact that I'm healed before the surgery you must settle the fact I'm brought out before I go in you must settle your fact the way is already made while I'm walking through this maze you must settle the fact that God is for me while I'm standing up against the thing you must settle the fact that God's going to open the door even though doors are closing come on and shout and say settle yourself he says settle yourself the second thing you have to do is stand still look in the text stand still means I need you to stand in faith come on tell your neighbor you got to stand in faith I need you to stand still in other words this is the moment I need you to stop your own activity I need you to stop what you've been trying to do and stand in faith knowing that I got this thing up in here you've been worrying about it you've been talking about it you've been crying crying about it but now I need you to stand about it I need you to stand in faith I need you to stand in the confidence of who I am I need you to stand in the confidence of what I've done I've done too much for you through you and about you for you not to doubt to doubt me now I brought you through too much before to leave you in want right now so stand still get a hold of yourself and stand in faith you gotta drop your anchor in God and stand in faith if the Lord did it once he's able to do it again you gotta stand still you gotta stand in faith you gotta speak to your mind and tell your mind I won't let my emotions override my confidence you gotta speak to your body and tell your body I won't let my body override my confidence you gotta speak to your spirit and tell your spirit take control of my mind take control of my body now command strength to come out of the Holy Ghost of God and stand still and 
and stand in faith. You got to stand on what you know about your God. Is there anybody in here? You know something about God? If God did it once, surely he's able to do it again. Is there anybody in here? You can testify today. He done it before. Surely he'll do it again. Somebody say, yeah. Yeah. Yes, he will. Stand in faith. You got to look at your children and say, if God has delivered me from where I was, surely he'll bring my child. If God heal my mama, surely he'll heal me too. If God turn it around for my brother and sister, surely he'll turn it around for me. Touch your neighbor. Tell them you got to stand in faith. Stand in faith. I'm closing here. But the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 11 that by faith dead sons were raised. And by faith the waters backed up. And by faith the lion jaws were stopped. And by faith fires were quenched. And by faith rehab came. Re rehab became a deliverer for the men of God. And by faith dead children were raised. And by faith issues dried up. And by faith shut doors open. And by faith graveyards open. And by faith the sick said I'm here. Yes! I came to tell you if it worked then it'll work now. I believe God. Touch your neighbor and say, believe God. Believe God. I believe God. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it's not over yet. I believe God's got another move. I believe he's working it out. I believe. Somebody said, I believe. Ooh. 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 Shake three people's hand and tell them, just keep on believing. 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 Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Just keep on believing. You haven't seen all that God has for you. Just keep on believing. Your best days are still ahead of you. Just keep on believing. For the just shall walk by faith. Yeah, yeah. The just shall walk by faith. We've come this far by faith leading 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 I'm leaning I'm leaning is there anybody here you say I'm leaning lean on your neighbor and say I'm leaning on the Lord trusting in his word He's never failed me yet. He may not come when you want him. Surely, he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. 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 Yes, it is. Hey. Tell your neighbor, yes, he is. 
Yes, he is. Bringing me out. Yes, he is. Making a way. Yes, he is. Turning it around. Yeah. 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 Yes, he is. He's able. I said he's able to do what no power is able to do. He's able. Anybody know he's able? Trust and believe. He's able to do it. Trust and believe. He's got your victory. Trust and believe. He's turning it around. Trust and believe. Well, I can't leave you on a cliffhanger the bible said that the third thing you gotta do is watch and see tell your neighbor watch and see what's wrong with your mother i'm watching and seeing how come you're not talking because i'm watching and seeing verse 17 said set yourself stand still and you will see the salvation of the Lord every now and then you gotta wait while you watch I'm gonna watch him make a way I'm gonna watch him turn it around I'm gonna watch him make me the head I'm gonna watch him fix it for me tell your neighbor see the Lord see yourself highly favored see yourself blessed in the city blessed in the field see yourself above and not beneath yeah 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 see yourself see yourself running see yourself the head see yourself wealthy see yourself out of debt see yourself driving new See yourself looking new. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, watch and see. Watch and see. There's a Pam. There's a Pam that's on your life. Watch and see. There's a Pam. for we look at things not as they are but we see them as it shall be sometimes three people tell them shall be uh -huh. Uh -huh. shall be uh huh Shall be. Yeah, shall be. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Oh, Shakamaya Senia. Who come about Shaka? You're a little shy. Shall be. Shall be. I need you to prophesy that down your road. Tell him it shall be. I don't know what you need to be, but it shall be. Hey! Hurry, 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 hurry,
Settle yourself. Stand in faith. See it finished. Watch and see. Grab a glimpse of where you're going. Grab a glimpse of the end. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Transformative living will give you transformative victory. And God confused the enemies. And the people who he thought knew him weren't ready for him. Sister Antoinette, the defectos who knew his plan I don't have time to exceed the decks anymore. Yeah, she come out. Yes, sir. Lord, help me. I'm coming. I'm going to sit down, baby. But I got to tell you this. That's why the Lord said, the Lord said to him, they, you go on the side of this. Because they are camped out on Jerusalem. The reason why he told them that because their first response was going to be Jerusalem. Because Je Jehoshaphat's strategy was always to go south toward his enemies. And his defectos knew it. The Lord said you go the other direction because they ain't expecting you to come that way. I'm done. Woo. So why are they looking one way? God has you coming another way. Because they know you. Your end is the same. But he changes the route how you get there. Your destiny is intact though your plans have changed. Fall in love with your destiny not with the plan. Because my plans are subject to change. But my destiny is still in route. Oh my God, hallelujah. 